Welcome to another edition of the Monday Night Wars, everybody. This is the WCW side, so it's Monday Nitro, week 55. It's November the 4th, 1996, the 60th episode of Nitro, but the 55th week they've gone head-to-head with Raw. Nitro beats Raw for the 19th week in a row. The score was 3.4 to 2.3. Nitro with a 3.4 rating. So that's 355 weeks now. Nitro has 36 wins, WWF has 17 wins, and 2 ties. This Nitro with the 3.4 rating on uh, November the 4th, 1996, began uh, with Tony Schiavone and the living legend Mike Tenay, or Larry Zabisco. Mike Tenay is not the living legend. Uh, they show Sting in the rafters, and Zabisco says he's haunting the place, thinking of like he's the Phantom of the Opera. This is the beginning of Sting being in the rafters uh, on most shows without saying a word, with his face painted white. And in a, bl- in a black jacket uh, coat. Uh, Shivani says Sting is here. The NWO is here tonight. And you also get Luger versus Booker T and the start of a tournament. And Bischoff is going to try and sign Roddy Piper for Hollywood Hogan for Starcade. The show begins with the commentary team talking about all that. Then they show the ending of Halloween Havoc where Piper confronted Hogan. They do a zoom in on Sting who's been very quiet to this point. Sting walks along the rafters. Zabisco says Sting has gone through a trance where no one has trusted him. He's a lost soul who needs belonging or purpose. What that purpose is, is the question. And it it added a lot to every Nitro with Sting up there, wondering what his motives were and not. It was intriguing at the very least. So it just began being intriguing each week. Uh, Marcus Alexander Bagwell with Scotty Riggs took on Brad Armstrong. And American Males is the dumbest theme song ever. Not actually ever, but it's up there. Uh, WCW never had a Jim Johnston to their music department, that's for sure. But even though they had some of the best themes, DDP, Cell 55, Sting, NWO, Goldberg, those themes are classic. But WWF had the best themes because they could make a just an average wrestler have a good theme. Or at least it would fit their character. Bagwell with a side headlock and an arm drag take down to Brad Armstrong, who's a pretty decent wrestler himself. Marcus Alexander Bagwell claps and gets the fans into it as Scotty Riggs on the outside does as well. A headlock takeover into a head scissors. Both of these guys chain wrestle for a little bit. Back up to the feet is Armstrong, and then he gives shoulder block to Bagwell. Uh, then, they, then they get another head scissors takeover uh, out of the side headlock takedown. Armstrong counters into a head scissors of his own, and then we get to commercial break. Back from the break, a battle into the corner, another arm jade take down, a huge slap at Armstrong, who comes in with uh, drop kicks to Marcus Alexander the Bagwell. Outside to the ring, a baseball slide, and then a slap to the face. Uh, clothesline drops Bagwell, and then a drop kick by Armstrong. Bagwell with the crossbody to the outside. The giant and DiBiase are shown coming from the entranceway in the crowd. Then they leave. An intimidation thing or a recruiting thing or a scouting thing. A big tornado DDT by Brad Armstrong to Marcus Alexander Bagwell. Near fall. Bagwell with the crossbody off the ropes and the three count. Bagwell pins Armstrong at 727 for the victory. This was a very good opener. Better than I expected. Good competition which is a break from the squash matches that we're used to getting. Highly competitive between Armstrong and Bagwell. Two stars and three quarters. DDP takes on Ice Train with Teddy Long next. Teddy Long has his words with Nick Patrick before the match due to their recent disagreements. Nick Patrick still with his neck cast on. The tag team champions, the Outsiders, come back into the arena from the from the fan area up top uh, when they show their belts, the tag team titles, and uh, they are playing because to DDP because uh, last week they watched DDP's match, and now this week it's almost like they're recruiting Diamond Dallas Page. Page wins over Ice Train with the Diamond Cutter after Ice Train gets distracted. A flooring forearm he missed, and then a Diamond Cutter. Ice Train signaled for the end, landed a clothesline to Page to the floor. The Outsiders jump Ice Train and whack him with the titles. Nick Patrick checks on Page. Ice Train asks the Outsiders to come back as they turned around, and that's when the Diamond Cutter got hit. So DDP won at 6.34. I rated it a star and three quarters. Malenko then defended his title against Scotty Riggs. Uh, and then six came out for the NWO because it's a cruiserweight title match. And he says he's going to be a cruiserweight champion in the future. Malenko takes advantage as Riggs crashed into the post when he came charging towards him. Malenko with a drop toe hold into a STF variation. Back in the ring, a double uh, axe handle off the top. 
up top again. Malenko back uh, goes to the ropes. Riggs loses his balance. Bagwell sends uh, him back in as Bagwell came to the ringside to help his partner Scotty Riggs in there with Malenko. An Oklahoma roll out of nowhere by Malenko, and that gets the win at 322 uh, in the sprint of a match between Scotty Riggs and Dean Malenko. The winner, Dean Malenko, at 322, retaining his titles, rated it a star and a half. Up next, Chris Benoit with Woman takes on Hector Guerrero. Benoit was really injured last week in the match with Eddie, and he says to Hector, you got to get your brother fighting your battles for you. So Hector th then slaps him in the face, and the two get it on. Head scissor takeovers into a Kiwi roll as both guys just exchange inside cradles. Uh, then a springboard crossbody to the outside by Hector Guerrero to Benoit and an armbar into an abdominal stretch into a backbreaker. Nice variation by Hector Guerrero. An armbar, then a gut buster by Benoit. A lateral press, then back up after a near fall. A headbutt followed by a knife edge chop. A kick and then another chop. Irish whipped into the ring and then to the ropes. And then an abdominal stretch. Sitting really low on the ribs was Benoit to Hector Guerrero. An arm drag takedown and then a backbreaker. They begin the countdown to hour two with seconds. Then Pyro goes off. Bischoff would normally take over, but he's trying to sign Piper to the match with Hogan for Starcade. So he's in Portland doing that. So Shivani continues to commentate, but now Bobby Heenan has joined the duo. So Heenan's commentating with Shivani now. As Zabisco goes out, as Heenan's now in. Hector and Benoit with another Kiwi roll, exchanging inside cradles. Then Woman gets in his business, and Benoit rolls... Uh, Hector up, uh, who was distracted, and Benoit puts his legs on the ropes for leverage and gets the three count. I gave the match two stars and a quarter. It was a decent match. Benoit wins. They show a clip of Double J making Morton tap out last week, and they show a replay of the Giants promo to Double J, saying that they, you have to check under your bed and in the closet because monsters exist, and the Giants basically one of them. Jarrett says that no one's taking leadership in WCW, and he needs to, and the horseman will. And then they show Sting watching this from above as uh, they talk about leadership, of course. So they want to show Sting. As, is he going to be the leader of WCW? Reina Jabuki took on Medusa in a first-round WCW Women's Title Tournament. Reina Jabuki with an armbar, and then she goes for a head scissors. Medusa counters, and with a head scissors of her own, she hits a bridge suplex. Uh, and then there's this Japanese female town named Zero watches in. And Medusa bridged out, and then a German suplex with a bridge of her own by Medusa, and that's what gets to the win at 314. I rated the match a star and a half. Jericho took on M. Wall Street, a flying crest body and a hip lock. Uh, Wall Street pounded away on Jericho, but Jericho, the quicker of the two, gets a small package out of nowhere, and that's why they call him Lionheart, as he gets victories with the heart of a lion, says the commentary, Shivani. And uh, he gets the victory over M. Wall Street. I rated it a star and a quarter. They show last week how Luger got a countout loss against Booker T because he was chased after Sting, but he couldn't find Sting. So the WCW booking committee makes Luger versus Booker T a rematch this week. Booker T and Luger went at it. Booker T with a lot of kicks to Luger. Uh, Luger goes for the torture rack, but Colonel Robert Parker comes to the ring and gets on the apron. Booker T gets distracted, and Luger rolls him up from the distraction and gets the three count. So Luger wins, but not by torture rack, which is usually what happens on Nitro with Luger victor getting victories. That does it for the matches portion of the show. I rated that match a star in three quarters. After the match, they go to the commentary team and talk about how Bischoff didn't get Piper to agree, but he's going to try next week. And then they show Hollywood Hogan and and Piper's promo from Halloween Havoc again. And then they show ends with DiBiase and Hollywood Hogan coming out with Giant and Vincent and the spotlight on Hogan. Hogan says that Trillionaire Ted, he, he, he promotes his movie. He talks about how Trillionaire Ted isn't getting the Piper match yet because Piper's scared. Piper's a baby. And Hollywood Hogan says that he got the lambs to the slaughter, but the, the, the lamb has no heart. Apparently, Piper is scared, doesn't have any guts. Hogan says, from this day forward, he is your master, and the NWO rule the world because he is the world champion. Hogan then poses and asks the crowd to make some noise a little bit while the NWO music goes on, and he flexes his muscles. It's pretty much intimidating Piper. I rated the show a 5 out of 10 because it was average in a lot of ways uh, for not Hogan's promo and the opening match with Bagwell and the Benoit Hector Guerrero match, it really had nothing really worth watching other than Sting in the rafters as that begins to be an entertaining story as that goes on. So yeah, 5 out of 10 for this week. We'll see what next week holds. 
I'm Brett Mix. Thank you for watching these reviews. They just fly by, and I'm out.